Hello again and welcome to Gloucester. So, some deadly sins of golf. Well, my list anyway. Your list is probably different to mine. So you've dashed up after work, it's Friday evening, you've joined your mates on the first tee, three swings and go. And everyone's got driver out. Because you don't want to be the odd one out. You fall into peer pressure. And quite often, two out of the four are going back to the bag for another ball. So to increase your chances of success, why not try five wood? 18 degrees, three inches shorter, more backspin. I think you'd probably start a little bit better with one of these than hitting the driver with your mates. Number two, ego. The idea that you hit the ball much further than you think you do. Take this par three up here. Two of the best players in this club, and they've been the best players for decades, they hit a five iron up here. A nice, lazy, smooth five iron. But you'd be surprised at how many think they can hit a nine. And of course, the front bunker is their favourite place to be. So take enough club, know your yardages, swallow your pride, who cares if your mate's taken an eight? If it's a seven for you, it's a seven. If it's a six, it's a six. That's it. Don't ever care about the number on the bottom of your club. Now I'm fairly certain I could actually thrash an eight iron up here today. But a 7 iron is much easier. I can just hit that real smooth one, take a few yards off it. Because I'm doing that, I'm far more accurate. And when you're far more accurate, then you get one of these for a bird. Ego is a real pain to your score. The fourth hole, stroke index one, using your shots or not. Out of 600 odd members, there's only two guys here who don't get a shot. But there's in excess of 100 who get two. So why on earth are you with two shots attempting to play this hole like the two guys who don't get a shot? If you've got shots, use them, don't waste them. Well, if I'm going to lecture it, I might as well do it. So I'm taking the five wood. That's plenty of club. Although I hadn't really planned to go over there. But on the other hand, if I'd hit my driver over there, I wouldn't have a golf ball anymore. It would be in the tall stuff. Laid up short of the ditch across the fairway. 110 yards into a little breeze. This will find the heart of the green, probably short of the back flag. So yeah, pay attention to the stroke indexes. How many shots you get. And adjust your target accordingly. If you need two shots, take them. Well, the next one is compounding an error. You've gone off track. 
you're here. You've got this thing behind you, between you and the green. Now there is an exit just under these branches here if you're good enough. But in reality, our exit's here, isn't it? Back to the fairway. Get back in play. I mean, you're not even chipping sideways. You're still going forward, but you're going to the fairway. That's the safe place to be. Perhaps not down through there. Simple as that. The next is copy and paste golf. This seventh tee from the yellows. All spring it was driver, the ground was soft, your ball went splat. Well it's summer, your ball doesn't go splat. In fact with the driver you can very easily run out of space up there, make a bogey in a heartbeat. So you've got to change what you're doing depending on the conditions. I'm mean, sure if we had the southwesterly here blowing down the hole, it's still a driver, but we don't. It's a bit sort of northeasterly, it's behind us. So it's most definitely not a driver for me. But don't copy paste, check the conditions, pick your club accordingly. middle of the fairway. If I'd used driver, who knows where it was vended up. Can anybody tell me if they need to be closer than a hundred yards to the flag? I don't feel that I do. Well, this is going to be the controversial one. I tried to put the ball to the hole. It is my belief that aggressive putting leads to three putts. Knocking it six feet past is considerably more dangerous than leaving your putt to the hole, perhaps a foot short or even two foot short. In reality, we don't hold many long putts, and the greater majority of golfers don't practice six footers. So, if you are somebody who likes to give the hole a chance, probably you'd be better off just rolling it up to the front edge and allowing luck to happen. Right, Papa Birdie bogey, pa 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 pa, and par on nine, so we're level par. So if I go low around the back I could win this thing. Well, you might, but you've probably just put yourself under far too much pressure by adding this thing up. Just put your numbers on the card, and then put it back in the bag. Now you will come across people who insist on counting the card up after nine holes because they don't trust you or some other reason. 
and you will come across people who insist on telling you your score all the way round. Which is rather annoying, isn't it? There was a guy I used to play with. He'd get his phone out around about the 15th and he'd look at the leaderboard. As the scores were going into how did I do, he would look at the leaderboard and he'd say something like, hey, if you birdie two out of the last four, you're going to win this. But you don't want to hear it. So there are two answers. Answer number one is remind him of his score every chance you get. Whether he's doing well or badly, just keep reminding him the same way that he's reminding you. And secondly, after you've finished the round, don't play golf with him again. Seriously, we all know the score in the back of our head, don't we? We all know we're doing re really well. We're doing better than our handicap. But the last thing you want is it to be here and on your mind. So that's the end of it. Don't add up your card and don't play with people who insist on telling you what your score is. Ta-ra! Oh, level par, it's not bad. Now if I could just par 10 and 11, birdies are, and get a birdie on 12, maybe 13, 14, 15 is a birdie chance, 16 definitely, 17 and 18 I can get down the hill. If I can convert half of those, I'm on for a 66.